So you've got your salesperson in place and it's been a few months and you're just thinking it's not working out. It happens as a business owner on a regular basis. And the challenging question that many ask themselves is this, when is the right time to fire or let my salesperson go? In this video, I'm gonna share with you a few of the key things to look out for in order to make that tough and brave and bold decision for you and your business. My name is James White. I'm a small business sales expert. We're gonna share some tips and ideas that are gonna help you and your company grow to the next level. Make sure you get things right to save those sales issues and problems. Let's have a look at the video and see what are the key things to look out for when you know it's time to So the first point is this, you bring a salesperson in to hit sales targets. So one of the obvious things that's gonna be the decision to let someone go is if they're not achieving the targets that you have set. And unfortunately, most people in sales realize that if they're not achieving the goals of bringing new business in, the chances are they're not gonna stay in that company. A couple of things I encourage you to think about before you do decide to let them go though, is could you achieve the target you set? or were the targets realistic, or have you given them a good chance to achieve those targets? I've got a number of other videos that can maybe be useful for you to think about how you can mentor and train that person to see if you can help them before you do say Sonayanara, but the reality is if they're not hitting their targets, that's a fundamental reason to unfortunately let someone go. The second reason is this, and that's that they don't take any action. I always say to people, sales is about two critical things the action that you take and how you take the action. And the reality is there's no point having the best salesperson in the world that has great skills and the ability to communicate if they actually then don't pick up the phone or send the email or do the work they need to do. The reality in business and sales is we've got to take action to get the results that we want. And if your salesperson is not taking action on a regular basis through the number of calls they make, through getting out and meeting people, through maybe the conversations they're having or prospecting on, on LinkedIn or social media, the chances are it's not gonna work. So have a little look for the action that they're taking. How many calls are they making? How many emails are they sending? What action are they taking on a day-to-day -day basis to help get the results for them and for you? And if they're not doing it, maybe it's time to say bye-bye. So the third point, maybe related to action, is motivation. We all have our bad days. Trust me, I get loads of days when I feel not particularly great and you have the moments you think, oh, I don't want to get up and do things. But I have a motivation and drive to actually get things done because I think about my bigger purpose and my mission and what I want to achieve. But your salesperson, your company needs to have that same inner motivation. It's one of the critical sales skills that I talk about when it comes to emotional sales intelligence. They've got to be motivated to want to better themselves and also better things for you and your company. So if they haven't got any motivation to actually get up and do things, then maybe that's a telltale sign that something's not right. And maybe that they need that fresh start. Maybe something's not right in their own personal situation. Or maybe it's just that they need to go and find themselves. I don't know, maybe a trip to Bali and do something spiritual. The key thing is you've got to have that motivation. You've got to find it. And if that person hasn't got it in your business, then maybe it's time for you as a business owner to say, it's time to give them or give someone else another chance. So the fourth point is this, what are their time management skills like? Some people say to me that they're really, really busy and they're busy doing a hundred things and you know, they haven't got time to do some of the sales work that they need to do. But when you start looking at the conversation, you start looking at what's happening, it's just because they don't manage time effectively. Maybe you've got a sales team that's out and about visiting clients and they go and see someone that's hundreds of miles away for one meeting. That doesn't make commercial sense. It would make sense for them to go and see four or five people in that day or that over a period of two days, but it doesn't make sense for them to travel a long way for one individual meeting. And most salespeople should be able to manage their time effectively so that they know they can maximize their opportunity to do business or to prospect or to engage with people that could become a client. If they really don't have those skills or aren't capable of being able to time manage themselves or get value from their own time, then maybe it should send warning signals to you that it's time to let them go. So point five is this, their attitude just stinks. Unfortunately, we've all been in organizations and seen people in organizations who, unfortunately, they just have a really terrible attitude. They feel everything's hard work, everything's a challenge. It feels like asking them to do even the simplest of tasks is a monumental effort. 
and it just feels hard work for you as a business owner and they just never want to react and respond. And unfortunately, these type of people, who sometimes I would call mood hoovers, you go into a room and they hoover up all the good news and moods and give you a load of bad vibes, just aren't worth having your organization. I would say to you, try and find out what's causing them to feel that way, because if you can understand them and what's happening, you can maybe help them solve it. But if their attitudes is really just not in line with where they were or what they said they would be, or actually over a period of time has dropped away, then it's time to maybe make a bold decision and to say, thanks very much. That attitude isn't gonna work in my organization, bye-bye. So point number six is this, do they fit within your culture and fit within your organization in an effective way? You know, there's that great saying that bad apples, unfortunately, spread issues in the barrel. And it's very much the same when it comes to salespeople and anyone that's not a good fit for your organization. If you bring someone in and they're then starting to talk about to other people about you and your company and bad mouthing things and moaning and saying everything's not right, then maybe you need to just make that, take that decisive action and let them go. The cultural fit that you have within any business is critical. And it's really vital that your culture and what your company stands for stands out and becomes a key tool for you to sell yourself and the company and what you do. And if you've got someone that's affecting that or maybe changing that culture, not for the better, then you need to think about what the long-term impact of that could be. How many clients could they be potentially speaking to where that prospect or that client gets that vibe around that person that isn't in line with what you want as a business owner? Really think carefully about the culture that you want to create and how the people in your organization reflect that culture when they talk to others. And if you're not getting that vibe from that salesperson or that fit doesn't feel right, then it's time to maybe just say enough's enough, let them go and move on and find someone that does fit your culture and your values. So point number seven, and this is one of the most challenging areas of trying to know whether someone's right for your company or not. And that's that You've brought them in and they're lovely people, but they're just too much of a maverick and don't fit your organization. Or maybe you've got a certain approach, a process, a sales structure that you operate with, and they just don't follow that. They wanna do things their own way because that's how they've always done things. And what you operate as a business doesn't work with what they wanna do. The challenge around that sometimes is if you're in a business that's looking to grow and develop and actually get results consistently over time, we have to measure what works and what doesn't work. That means we have to follow certain processes and structures. If your salesperson's coming in and trying to do everything their own way and doesn't want to follow the party line or at least try that line to get the results that they want, then maybe they're not a good fit for you. So point number eight is this. Are they prepared to continue learning? I've done so many sales training with business owners and salespeople who unfortunately think they know it all. They bring you in to talk about something in a new way of maybe handling an objection or being able to approach a potential client and then we'll come back with, oh no, I know how to do that, or no, I don't need to do this, or don't work for me, that wouldn't work for me. And it's like, they've just got this closed mentality and mindset that stops them from learning. And if your salesperson that you're trying to support and help has that closed mentality and mindset and doesn't want to learn, I'm guaranteeing you it's something you should be really, really careful about. And actually in my business would be something that would make me feel, no, they're not right for us. Michelangelo said, 87 years old, I've just painted the Sistine Chapel. I'm still learning. So if he's still learning, he's one of the greatest painters of all time, and most business owners know they have to continue learning and developing their own skills, then why is your sales team any different? If you've got someone in your business that doesn't want to learn, doesn't want to pick up new skills, doesn't want to help to become better, then it should send warning signals to you that it's time to let them go. Learning is critical. I do it, everyone does it. The best business owners and people in the world do it. Your sales team should be no different. And my final point around when is the right time to fire your salesperson is when they start to do things in an underhanded or unethical way. I was once told that if you lie, then it makes all of your truths unimaginable. And if you've got a salesperson in your business that's maybe sharing things that aren't true or telling prospects information about your company that aren't right or that are gonna cause you problems later down the line, then it's time to make a change. So if your salesperson is in a position where they're lying or being dishonest to your clients, you need to say, that's not gonna work for me. And maybe you might give them one chance, but if they continue to do it on a regular basis, you're probably gonna say, enough's enough, it's time for you to leave and we'll move on and do the business in the right way that will get us the value to our prospects and customers and help build our brand and make us a company people want to do business with.
Unfortunately, doing things in the wrong way will hurt you, will hurt your company, and I don't want that happening for you and your business. So there are these nine points on when you know it's the right time to fire your salesperson. Unfortunately, it's a real tough thing to do, and making these type of decisions is not what anyone enjoys. And in the next video, I'm gonna share with you how to go about doing that, so you can do it in the right way that protects you, your business, but also gives the other person that you're letting go the chance to build a new future for themselves. The key thing is this though, there's no point denying the issue. If things aren't working out, if you're seeing these traits appear on a regular basis, you have to take action, be brave, and do the right thing, even if it feels like a difficult thing to do at the time. I hope this video has been useful in giving you as a business owner some ideas on when is the right time to fire a salesperson. My name is James White, small business sales expert. Subscribe to the channel, share it with others. And let's make sure we get new videos around sales and how to get better sales results in with you every Saturday morning on a regular basis. Thanks for watching. See you soon.